So why isn't Labor invoking the party hopping legislation and what was in that letter that we can't see? Well, one person I know from reading his comments on Twitter and seeing him on TV who was scratching his head for much of yesterday afternoon was National MP and I think Shadow Leader of the House, uh, Chris Bishop, and he joins us on the line now. Chris, welcome to the platform. G'day. I'm not actually the Shadow Leader of the House oh. uh, currently, but um, I do enjoy a good scrap in the Parliament, as yeah. you know, Sean. Well, so, i got to uh, say, we've all seen some weird stuff in that chamber, but yesterday afternoon, that was off the bizarre scale. It was truly extraordinary, and I've never seen it in my time as an MP. Um, literally no one knew what was going to happen at 2 o'clock. The speaker got up and said, look, um, Mecca Fightery is now you know, not taking the Labour whip anymore, so uh, not giving her vote to Labour. Uh, and then we just had 20 minutes of back and forth, and I think the people watching, they were, I mean, there were some Japanese visitors from the Deputy Parliament there, and, you know, God knows what they made of it all. It would have been very confusing. It was really one for the parliamentary train spotters, but the real point is this. Mecca Whairi was elected as a Labour MP in 2020. She wants to join the Maori Party, um, and but she's actually an independent MP for parliamentary purposes. And the real issue is whether or not that triggers the Electoral Integrity Act. That's the Walker Jumping yeah. legislation. And there's two ways to trigger that. The first way is by the MP themselves Resigning. telling the Speaker... Yep. resigning, telling the Speaker that uh, the party was for whom they were elected, they are no longer representing. Yeah, That's the first way. And then the second way is if the um, the leader of the former parliamentary party, so in this case Chris Hipkins... The one that left? That has happened. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's work through those two scenarios, though. Mecca Faiteri holds a press conference yesterday organised by the Māori Party, her new buddies, and she says she is resigning or has resigned and has written to the Speaker telling him that. That's right. Right, exactly she right. says that. She says that in public, no doubt about it. That wasn't, no one made that up. It wasn't, uh, you know, fake. So a whole lot of people, given that she's said that publicly, presume that that means the Electoral Integrity Act is triggered under that first scenario that you laid out, Right. Absolutely, because what it, what it requires is three things. One, it requires a, a written notice, mm. so that's a letter or, or an email. Yeah. Secondly, it has to be addressed to the speaker. Well, yeah. clearly, the, you know, it's fine. Yeah. Then it has to say, I no longer consider myself a member of the parliamentary yeah. party for whom I was elected. Yeah. And that's what she said. She said she'd written to the speaker, okay. officially resigning. Okay, so <laughs> she said all that, so that's the prima facie course of action. Then the question becomes, when Parliament resumes and she sits there, and obviously, what did she write and say to the Speaker? Did she resign? Well, that, that is really unclear. And what was reported last night, and this is a little bit worrying, is that there were actually two communications with the Speaker. She wrote to the Speaker, and then that letter or email was withdrawn and replaced with another one. And the worrying thing here is that if she wrote to the Speaker and said, I'm resigning as a Labour Party MP and I now wish to be a Maori Party MP, effective immediately, which is what she said. Yep, that, that is what takes she said. Effect immediately. Yep. That, that no if, no buts, no rid. babies. Maybes, yeah. She's resigned, as, essentially, she's resigned as an MP there and then. But the Act takes effect. doesn't take effect at 2 o'clock. doesn't take effect the next day. It, it's there and then. That's the way the law yep. works. Yeah, I get you. And... And so we're we're just going to there's a bit a bit further to run on this, and we're going to uh, ask quite the speaker questions about it today, um, because if that's what happened, that's quite worrying. And we know that John Tommy here he sort of took over and said, "I'll answer all the constitutional questions." So something yeah. has gone on, and the speaker could clear all this up by releasing the letter or letters, couldn't he? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you probably remember I ran that campaign three years ago for Julianne Gentis to release the secret yeah, letter that yeah, stopped yeah. the Mount Lick Tunnel. Well, yeah. you know, they would hashtag release the letters uh, back in vogue again. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, all of this could be cleared up. If and I'm sorry if he doesn't, public. if he doesn't, I'm questions about the integrity of our Speaker and therefore the integrity at its core of Parliament have to be asked. And that's really concerning, yeah. Chris. It is really concerning. Look, Adrian Rurafe has done an outstanding job as Speaker so far. You know, Trevor Millard was an appalling speaker, as, as I think yeah, um, yeah. many listeners would agree. Uh, but 
Adrian's done a really good job. He's let the house run. You know, he doesn't intervene too much. Yeah. It's a good and robust debate. He's been good and he's been respectful. Uh, 